Welcome to another Pop Dissected podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the key roles and players within the music industry to help us understand who fulfills all the various obligations from business to creativity. I was inspired to do this after seeing a viral video on TikTok in which someone working within the industry was upset that the artist they had worked for was not paying them for their time and for their work. So it got me thinking, surely it isn't the artists themselves who is responsible for the payment? And no, it's not. So I asked myself, who is responsible for that? And what other roles exist within the music business? Now, we won't be going into a deep dive of every single role that exists, but we'll discuss the key players, likely positions that you've heard of. These positions aren't always as simple as they seem, but they aren't as always as complex as we make them out to be. If you're excited to hear more about the pop music world, be sure to drop a like and subscribe, and be sure to turn on that notification bell so you can be the first to know when a new video is out. First, let's talk about within the studio roles, starting with the songwriter. Artists or performers can write their own song single-handedly, or they can collaborate with songwriters to help them flesh out their ideas. Songwriters can be a handful of people or a larger group of people. The job of the songwriter is to help bring out the storyline to its full potential within the song. Because there are so many types of songs, this can be challenging. Sometimes we hear songs and we may scoff at their simple lyrics, and while at times it can pass for a laziness in writing, it could also be the songwriting team is attempting to accomplish a specific feeling with their lyrics. We're not in the studio, so we don't know if what we hear was written just to finish it or it was really chipped away at to be what it is. But one thing is true, that songwriting is not a slam dunk of a task. Songwriters can be brought in if a song is missing a crucial piece itself, such as a bridge, or simply needs tweaking. We may see songs with a load of songwriting credits, and this is for several reasons. This could be because so many people worked on the song, or because it's sampling another song, In that event, the original songwriters and producers must be credited. That said, we never fully know the total involvement of a songwriter, and if their credit is for minimal or maximum contribution. Next, let's move on to the producer. While this role is of course to help create the actual music we hear on the track, there are different ways producers can go about this. Some songs are written with specific harmonies and melodies in mind. This can act as a framework for the producer to build off of. Other songs are written to harmonies and melodies that already exist, which can actually present more of a challenge to the songwriters. A producer can work to imprint their own sound onto an artist. Some producers have a very specific type of structure or shape they utilize within their sound. By passing the sound to as many artists as possible, they become more well known. Sometimes we ask ourselves, why do these songs sound the exact same or similar? And it's because the producer is working with a sound they found to be best at and want to use it. Think of it as a signature they sign with. Another type of producer is the one who creates music to specifically benefit the artist they're working with, which I would argue is the most creative producer. This producer finds out what sounds and rhythm are going to be most beneficial for the artist's voice. This also depends on what type of image and branding the artist is looking for. Now, those are the two key players within the studio that we hear the most about. A producer can also serve as one of the individuals who plays instruments we hear on the track. Then you have the actual instrumentalist who play the music, if the music is not strictly digitized. With modern technology, artists can opt for live music or it can all be curated in the studio with the technology that's available. The producers handle mixing the tracks as well, balancing the vocals, levels, and so on. You can have additional mixers brought in to assist as well. Finally, there are recording engineers who help set up the recording space itself, and there can be engineers dedicated to specific instruments. These roles can also assist in the mixing and recording process. In the aspect of artist management, You have A&R managers, which stands for Artist and Repertoire, and you also have Touring Managers. Before we dive into these, it's important to note that you have additional promotional roles. This would include a social media manager, record company salesperson who assists in merchandising, a website content producer, and so on. And there are dozens of management roles as well, but for this video, we're going to be focusing on touring 
and A&R. A touring manager works directly with the tour promoter as well as venue managers. Their job is to oversee the touring schedule, ensuring the traveling from one place to another is expedited and done as smoothly as possible. They also schedule out everything for the parties they're traveling with, from arrivals to sound checks. You can also have a tour coordinator, responsible primarily for the financial aspect of touring, budgets, payroll, who gets paid when, as well as handling settlements for incidents that may occur on the road. Before we get into the A&R roles, I'd like to quickly shout out my channel members, Skyhawker, Daniel Barron, and Steven. If you'd like to help decide future video topics, get exclusive chat and comment badges, and receive shoutouts, then I'd love to have you as a channel member. Now, A&R has a branch of roles, but we'll be discussing the A&R admin and coordinator. In short, the general role of the A&R department is to find talent within the industry and help them establish their brand and fan connection. An A&R coordinator has the duties just mentioned, but may also have the opportunity to work on specific projects. In doing so, they can decide which songs would fit an artist's album better. But not only that, but also which would best represent the label. They can also serve as a liaison for all the individuals within management who prefer this type of music for an artist, or a certain song, or a specific beat. It's really about helping shape what is going to be the most beneficial for the artist and their identity, especially when you have a ton of people in your ear telling you what you should do. This role also requires a lot of foresight and being able to determine if an artist, producer, etc. is marketable not only within the industry, but also within the label as well. You learn to take calculated risks. An A&R admin can have a hand in the aforementioned responsibilities, as many roles within a specific department may bleed into each other. But this position isn't really rooted in creativity, it's logistical. They ensure any appropriate rights are secured for music, the album artwork and photo shoots are to top quality, create the actual barcoding on albums, as well as monitor the data for tracking shipments, and they also monitor expenses. So these are only some of the roles in an ever-growing and expansive industry. If you'd like to hear about more roles, then please let me know down in the comments, and I'll make a continuation to this. If there are other aspects of the music industry you'd like to learn about, then post a comment and we can learn together. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. What was the most interesting fact that you learned in this podcast? Was there anything that surprised you, or did you know everything already? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for more future content on all your favorite pop stars.